right now i am pursuing my phd study in aerospace engineering at uh, university of toronto at the department of institute for aerospace studies okay and right now i am in toronto in canada that's a really nice question you know a lot of people struggle with it so in my case uh when i was looking for universities i wasn't being country specific or anything i was looking at course specific because like phd is something uh, you can't just you know go to any university you have to be like certain universities are good in certain areas so i had to figure out you know like uh, which all universities are good in combustion studies so since that's what i wanted to pursue Typical as in, no. Right now, I find it pretty chill, you know, compared to what you study in India. Uh, the coursework is chill, but the PhD research part that always that's always challenging. So yeah. There were around fourteen PhDs who joined with me at the department. So this was the batch strength. And yeah, since it's PhD, so. it's not a fixed number every year it's quite varying so a lot of people join just after their masters or even after their bachelors and there are few people who join just after their like after working for 5 years so yeah people joining at 30 years of age as well and 24 years of age as well in india i would say it's more relaxed because you don't have to worry about you know other parts of your life like cooking and traveling and all most of the times you will get an accommodation in the university itself or you will have a mess in place so like student life is much better in india i would say but uh, yeah like experiences you know uh, the work culture in terms of phd the work culture over here is pretty good compared to what i have heard or what i got to know from my friends in india phd beat phd beat msc at university of toronto it's fully funded so apart from your tuition fees you will be getting around 18000 so that's a standard amount especially in my department so it might vary from department to department and you do get 18000 can earn dollars a year that's the basic minimum and on top of that uh, you can work part time you can do teaching assistantship you have you know linkedin you can find jobs over there a lot of times you go to stores so it depends on what kind of work you want to do so a lot of times you know you can find you can just go to stores you can find some part time jobs over there or you can you know fine if you want to do tutorship you can just contact your own university there are a lot of tutorship positions open you will be given minimum basic pay so uh, currently i am not doing any part time job i don't have much idea but from people i have heard it's around 17 canadian dollars that's the minimum and max you can go to like there is a friend of mine who's a tutor he gets 15 canadian dollars per hour lot of indians in toronto so actually i am not in downtown toronto my university department and like my department is slightly far from the main campus but yeah even here you have a lot of indian students quite a good number not much of preparation was required so uh, especially if you prepare for your gre you are pretty much done for your toefl so uh, that's not a big difference and you can you know for gre i just focused on ready made available materials magush and uh, whatever you can find on internet magush play cards were uh, pretty helpful yeah. yeah apart from that you know just some readings here and there whatever you find on like open source and you have a lot of open source open tests as well you just register give open tests uh ets material was good so ets book so i i bought that book and it also comes with a few tests so just give those tests and all you will be done in my case uh, for phd's you know you have to be very clear like what you want to work on why you want to work on 
and why are you choosing this particular field in my case uh, uh, i wasn't applying at universities right away first i was you know contacting professors so it's like if the professor is free or if the professor is you know free to take any students this year then only i will apply otherwise there is no point so uh, you you i had to contact professors you send maybe 50 60 mails you get response from 10 maybe max two of them will interview you so that's how it was this moment i would say <clears throat> like in terms of the uh, admission journey i would say you know the interviews the interviews like i had a quite a few interviews and they were very <clears throat> informative so in lot of interviews i got to know why these professors are doing this work and how is it different from what i have though i am from combustion background but <clears throat> i was working in financial industry for 2 years so i had lost a bit of touch but it was you know very uh very what to say insightful for me to see that how the combustion as a group has evolved you know they are focusing on a different aspects now a lot of professors who were uh, hardcore combustion people they were moving away from combustion into new new age fuels and all those things that was pretty informative for me like i had a meeting with french uh, french professor so uh, there you know you have a lot of language barriers so it's like it was hard for me to understand so after that that happened but the the guy who was supposed to be my supervisor i was not able to communicate with him at all because he knew only french and i knew only english the most difficult part is you know getting responses so you mail professors most of the times you don't get responses and yeah that's the most difficult part you know apply mail if you don't get responses reevaluate and always you know consult someone who has been through this journey because they will have a lot to say so show your sop show your resume to them is it looking good yeah don't choose courses blindly this is one thing i would say a lot of people just tend to go for courses just because of country so choose courses you know go for good universities 